Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are covering an exciting new Python library. Previously we have covered data build tool commonly known as dbt. dbt is a data transformation Python library. It decoupled the extract, transform and load process commonly known as ETL. dbt covered the T in the ETL. We are left with wanting a tool for the EL process. Now we have the data load to library in Python. As the name suggests, this does the extract and load part of ETL. This library is commonly referred to as DLT, a perfect companion for dbt. DLT is an open source library that we can add to our Python script to load data from various data sources into well-structured data sets. There's no need to use any other backends or containers. We simply import DLT into our Python file or into a Jupyter notebook and create a pipeline to load data into any of the supported destination. You can check the list of supported destination on their site. To get started, we simply install the library. We can install it with a pip command. But first, let's go ahead and create a virtual environment and we are going to activate this environment. In this environment, let's issue a pip install command. So we'll say pip install dlt. This will go ahead and install the library. While we're here, let's also install the dlt library with Postgres dependency. We'll use Postgres as our destination database. So we'll issue pip install dlt postgres. Let's also take care of the other dependencies. We'll need SQL Alchemy. So we'll go ahead and install SQL Alchemy in this environment. For our source, which is SQL Server, we'll need PyODBC. So we'll go ahead and install this library. If you want an example project to get started, all we need to do is initialize a sample project with a pipeline that loads data to Postgres. We can run DLT init chess Postgres in the project directory, let's navigate to the .dlt directory. Here we will configure Postgres credentials. Postgres settings are under destination.postgres.credentials. So here we provide the database, password, username, and the host. This sets up our destination database. By the way, if you need to set up Postgres database, I've covered the Postgres installation in this video here and SQL Server installation is covered here. I will leave the link for both of the videos in the description below. So in the base of our project directory, we're going to go ahead and create a Python file. So we'll create a pipeline that extracts data from SQL Server and loads it to Postgres. As usual, we import the required libraries at the top. We're going to grab the source database credential from environment variables. Then we save the server, driver, and the database name in local variables. By the way, we do need the SQL Server native client installed on our machine. Let's create a connection to SQL Server. We built a connection string using the variables. Then we create a URL and finally create the engine using SQL Alchemy. Now using this connection, we query the SQL Server's dim product category table. We execute the query and save the result into rows variable. Okay, now we create a DLT pipeline. We provide a name to this pipeline and set the destination server. The destination server's detail and credentials are pulled from the secret file that we configured initially. The dataset name is the schema name in the target database. If you specify a name that doesn't exist, it will go ahead and create a new schema. We call the run function from the pipeline. In this function, we convert the rows to dictionaries on the fly using a map function. We save the data into a table called dim product category. At the end, we print the results of the load function. This is all the code required to create a DLT pipeline. Let's save our work and give it a run. The pipeline ran successfully and it prints out that that one package were loaded to destination Postgres and we have loaded the data into public schema. 
we navigate to our target database and expand the public schema. We do see a few DLT audit related tables. They store the source related information such as source name and schema. Anyways, we have the DIM product category table present. We can query it to see data. This table also has the DLT audit columns. So this is the new data load library. It complements the data build tool. We'll cover more of this library in the future and how we can use this in conjunction with DBT. If you want to get started with DBT, then be sure to check out the DBT related videos under the Modern Data Stack series. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.